doesn't say anything about flying. But of course, the only way that wings help you as an adaptation is by flying really well. That's what wings are for. And what cognitive systems are for is getting it right. That's why they evolved. So, so the the 50%, the coin flip suggestion that the Alvin makes, I think, is completely un ungrounded. Okay. Yeah. And I'll speak up. So I have one question for Professor Bennett, one question for Professor Blanchard. Okay. Professor Blanchard. Um, so you gave an argument for probability of R given N and E being low and inscrutable, or low in this case. And uh, what I'm wondering is this. It seems at first glance that the argument might prove a bit too much. Can everyone hear me? Uh, okay. I'll speak up. It seems that the argument for the probability thesis, the probability of R given N and E is low, might prove too much for the following reason. Let's take another belief that naturalists hold, say the belief that uh, humans and their cognitive faculties were formed near the surface of a planet. Now, relative to that belief, which isn't perhaps included in naturalism and evolutionary theory, but relative to that belief, if you look at any belief of your hypothetical population, then the probability of that belief being true will also be, say, 0.5. So if you take that belief, uh, which, you know, say, both theists and naturalists accept, then you can still get uh, some version of the probability thesis relative to that. And so I'm wondering what the difference is between these two cases, because in the case that I'm describing, the argument seems to go through and you might get a defeater merely on the basis of believing that we were formed near a planet. Uh, let's see if I understand. You're, you're, you're suggesting that um, there are some other propositions with respect to which the proposition in question is unlikely and therefore we get a defeater, or therefore we might. But I don't think you get a defeater just any old time you believe something P and also believe something else Q with respect to which uh, it's improbable. That happens only under certain circumstances. I mean, there are all kinds of things. I believe, that are improbable with respect to each other, but don't constitute the feeders. Right. So, for example, I've just, um, I've, I've just dealt out a bridge hand. Mm -hmm. The probability that you'd get just that bridge hand um, in a deal is something like um, 1 out of uh, 10 to the 28th, I believe. Right. Very, very low. Right. But I, I don't get a feeder for either one of those solutions under those conditions. Oh. It's got to be, it's got to be something special. It's got to be, in this case, uh, some proposition which is um, importantly about the origin and provenance of the uh, cognitive faculties and the like. If with respect to that, this probability is low, then I think, I think one does get the fear. With respect to what uh, Dan was saying a moment ago about flying, uh, eagles and the like, um, absolutely, I think, uh, I, I, think that, I think that is how it is, how it turns out that um, flying is adaptive. At, uh, because it enables the ego to do what it has to do and the like of that. Um, and I think that's also true with respect to cognitive faculties. But, so it's really, so when you consider the neurology as part of the cognitive faculties, there have to be indicators, which indicators are accurate in one's body. Uh, so for example, there are lots of indicators of say, the uh, say the content of your blood and so on and so on. There have to be the right kind of indicators but there doesn't have to be the right kind of belief to go with these <laughs> indicators. That's a totally different subject. That's a totally different subject. The underlying neurophysiology has to be such that it produces adaptive behavior. Perhaps that underlying neurophysiology also produces, <coughs> either by way of uh, logical supervenience or causal supervenience, belief with a certain content, but it in no way follows that the, that content has to be true. Maybe it's true, maybe it's false. All right. Of course, of course. I'm not arguing that. In, I'm not arguing for skepticism. I'm not saying that's in fact the way it is. That our beliefs do not track the truth. Not for a minute. All I'm saying is um, that's what the probability would be given just naturalism and evolution. All right. Let's take one last question. Dan. Uh, question for Dan. Um, I just wanted to hear more. You, you, you seem to um, uh, believe that the the probability that we all have good reason to think the probability of evolutionary naturalism is quite high. Mm -hmm. It's the naturalism part that I wanted to hear about. 
I mean, I could speculate that you think, given the explanatory success of science, uh, this is part of what you would appeal to, but I'd like to just a sketch. Uh, how, how does the story go? Does it go through some kind of empiricist conception of knowledge or, or what? I'm not, I'm not hearing how you think a, a metaphysical thesis like naturalism uh, is made likely. Just like to hear, hear you talk about it. Well, since I've only got a few minutes at most to talk about it, I'll just make one point of many that I'd make. Um, I think that um, the natural sciences can provide us with a very compelling explanation of why and how people came to believe in God, which does not at all suppose that it would, it would be a true belief, but if we can, if we can diagnose the etiology of belief in God, uh, and even make predictions about how and why this would be the case and how it would work, then we have undercut the presumption that because so many people believe it, it must be true. If we've got a good theory that explains how a sort of massive systematic falsehood could arise in a human population and be maintained over generations, then that in itself uh, is a pretty good reason for supposing that, that 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 we've got a good handle on this better than their handle on science. All right, well let's thank both of our speakers.